Aloha, my name is Mrs. Fisher, and today we are going to be looking at grammar concept number two, quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing. All right, so let's begin. What is paraphrasing? Paraphrasing is putting a short passage from another author or speaker into your own style. Paraphrasing should not alter the ideas of the original author or speaker. Paraphrasing can be shorter or longer than the original passage. The style of paraphrasing. Paraphrasing might be best described as translating a passage into a new style. All evidence of the original style, including sentence structure and word choice, that reveal the original author's personal style should be changed. Some instructors require that the order of ideas presented, that you put the order of the ideas that you present, has to be different as well. So here's an example of what not to do when you're paraphrasing. So here's the original piece is teenagers are hurt by raising the minimum wage in two ways. So that's what the author stated. And now if you were to paraphrase that and state, <clears throat> teens are wounded by increasing the minimum wage in two fashions. Why is this one wrong? Only a few words were changed. In the blue, you can see changed hurt to wounded. In the green, changed raising to increasing. And in the red, changed ways to fashion. And a lot of times teachers will teach you to do that. And I, I myself have, am to blame for doing that. I have told students just to use synonyms <clears throat> to put it into their own words. And that is okay to do, but there's a better way to do it than in the same order. So here's the same statement done correctly. So teenagers are hurt by raising the minimum wage in two ways. A good paraphrase would be, as suggested by Leslie Carter, there are two areas where minimum wage increases have had a negative impact on teenagers. So notice that this is good because the main ideas stay the same, but the original sentence structure is no longer visible. Paraphrasing still requires a citation. Whenever you get information from another source, you must give the source credit. All right, so here's a cute little um, way to remember how to paraphrase. R-S-T-T, -T. read the fact, stop. So read it first, then stop. What were the important words? Think, how can I say it differently? Then tell the facts in your own words. Okay, and then there is summarizing. So what is summarizing? Summarizing means to take a long reading or a whole document written by someone else and reducing it to only the main points in your own style. So summaries are shorter than the original. Summaries should not change the ideas of the original writing or spoken words. So you can summarize, paraphrase, and quote, obviously, not just what's written, but you can also do that by what's spoken. <clears throat> So, summarizing is shorter than the original source. The way that I like to remember summarizing is by S-U-M. Shorter than the original text. Use your own words and state all of the main ideas, but only main ideas. So, summarizing made simple. Unlike a paraphrase, a summary does not go line by line to report on all the ideas from an original. A summary is just the main ideas, the major points about your topic. A summary still requires a citation, which means giving credit to the original source. Make sure you are accurate to the original source. When you're summarizing or when you're paraphrasing, you must be accurate to that original source. It is unethical to report that someone said something or meant something that they did not say or mean. 
like fake news that you've heard of, do not take something out of context. So sometimes when you find something that you're looking for evidence and you find that they said this and you're like, oh great, they did say it. And then if you read that sentence a little bit more, they kind of counter it. You're like, oh, they didn't say it. So then you go, oh, what if I just report on the part that they did say it? That's plagiarism and it's you're not being accurate to the original source. So you can't do that. All right, so make sure the main points are in your own words and avoid accidental plagiarism. So cite both the author's name, if known, and the page number for your in-text citation. So in-text means while you're writing the paragraph about what you're talking about that's inside the text. So in-text citation is during your writing of what you found as opposed to the works cited page where you have a bibliography. So. Um, you cite both the author's name, if it's known, and the page number for your in-text citation, and then include the entire source in your bibliography works cited page. So what is quoting? Quoting is repeating exactly what another author or speaker wrote or said. So here is um, when you are quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing, the way to introduce that information um, is watch this TLQC wrap, and it will explain to you how I would want you to introduce those quotes, paraphrases, and summaries. Mrs. Fisher is back, and she's here to rock. Rhymes about English can never be stopped. See, there's one concept, and I know it's fresh. It's TLQC, and I know it's depth. See, the T is for transition, L for lead in. The Q is for quotation, putting quotes within. Behind the quotation, the C is for claim. Giving credit to the source is the name of the game. Now, here's a little something about citation. Without the citation, it's plagiarism. Best <laughs> Motivating, writing, and creating, and everybody knows plagiarism's devastating. I know you like writing, so give this a whirl, cause TLQC will be rocking your world. TLQC is mnemonic. is a tool when people start to listen especially smart people they pay close attention you might not believe it you might not even buy it but when it comes to writing well you might want to try it TLQC it's mnemonic now all you TLQC people T-transition and use first next or last it's how you begin this is what we have to say. Connected to your thesis in a meaningful way. TLQC. It's mnemonic. Now if the L lead in before each quote, like you can cut in with what the author wrote. Like according to Mr. Author, comma, quote, in quotes, word for word, what the author wrote. It, Don't set your source, you'll fall way behind. Source and page number. TLQC. It's mnemonic. Now you writing people know what TLQC means. I didn't want to brag because TLQC is way too clean. Now people, don't you know, TLQC is a tonic. If you listen real hard, TLQC is mnemonic. It's mnemonic. And the L for lead in The Q is for quotation And you want to written in The C is for citation So plagiarism ends So on the turn paper getting A's We'll begin TLQC Alright <clears throat> So by the way 
I'm at home with COVID, by the way, just so you know why I do have a little bit of a scratch in my throat, but <clears throat> I'm quarantining. So TLQC, transition lead in quotation citation and what we didn't say in the wrap, explanation. So when you're writing, if you use these colors, it certainly will help. So you will be using colors in my class. And um, when I write, I do go back and highlight mine to make sure that I didn't miss any parts. So you should T, transition in. So a final outstanding revolutionary war hero who demonstrated numerous characteristics is Kate Berry. So that's our transition. Like you said, a first, a next, a final. <clears throat> Now, our lead in is now going to be focused on our thesis statement. So the thesis statement is what characteristics, what are the characteristics of a revolutionary war hero? So we see here that we transitioned into a final outstanding revolutionary war hero who demonstrated numerous characteristics is Kate Berry. She exhibited the characteristics of being clever and resourceful. So that's responding to that thesis, that lead into the thesis. And now we have our quotation. And I have you put it in orange because um, I have this cute little rhyme that I say, um, aren't you glad you use credible evidence? Aren't you glad you use relevant evidence? Aren't you glad you use sufficient evidence? So this orange is your evidence. And you might say, well, Miss Fisher, why is this still yellow? Or why is this white and this white you missed something. No, I'm putting the quote first and then I'm going to put in the citation sandwich. So you put in your quote and then you have your author introduced in the beginning and your page number at the end. So that's a that citation sandwich. So here's the quote. She is a brave patriotic woman who successfully spied on the Tories, British sympathizers warned to American militia when the British were about to invade and recruited patriots to fight before the Battle of Cowpens. Her actions ultimately saved hundreds of American soldiers and was instrumental in winning the Revolutionary War. So now we have that citation sandwich that I just told you. So that's our yellow. So we book ended on both sides where we introduce our author and our source. An example of her heroic characteristics can be seen in the following quote. Now, whenever you put, before you put in your quote, if you always use that same, um, signal phrase, then you'll be doing great. An example of her, of whatever it is it is that you're going to talk about, can be seen in the following quote, colon, space, according to. Now I have the, the title, 10 Heroes of the American Revolution by Donna Fisher, and then that quote. At the end, notice the period is not inside the quote is after the page number so that you know that page number went with this quote. All right, this quote reveals that, oops, next one, sorry. That's your citation, now your explanation. And again, with a signal um, phrase that we start with, this quote reveals that Kate Berry was clever and resourceful. Notice we're restating that thesis again, because she is quick to understand the situation and devise a clever plan using her resources. This can be seen when she dressed like a simple-minded man and wandered into the Tory camps to spy on the enemy, and when she turns American farmers into patriotic fighting soldiers. There should be a comma there. Her ability to use these innovative means allowed the Americans to win the Revolutionary War. All right, so it is illegal to use someone else's words and or ideas and not give them credit. You must give credit when summarizing, paraphrasing, or directly quoting. Therefore, to avoid plagiarism, cite your sources when you are summarizing, paraphrasing, or directly quoting. Always include an in-text citation with, at a minimum, the author and page number. Plus, at the end, you need to have a works cited page. The works cited page needs to be in alphabetical order by author's last name. And for each citation, you'll include the author, date it was published, title of the source, publishing company, and the page number. If you have the URL because it's online, you should also put that.
All right. So additionally, to avoid plagiarism, if the source you are using quotes someone else and you want to use that quote too, you attribute the quote to the person who really wrote or said it. So you change your citation to show both the person you quoted and the author of your source. So for example, Brenda Shields, as cited by Ninemeyer, says, so I want what Brenda Shields said, but I got it from a secondary source because I'm quoting Ninemeyer. So you always put the original person who wrote what the quote is about to be. So according to Brenda Shields, as cited by Ninemeyer says. So this citation, you're giving credit to Ninemeyer because that's where you got the source from, but Brenda Shields was the original person who said the majority of injuries were sustained by children 12 to 17 years of age, mostly females. If the source you are using quotes someone else and you want to use both words, use double and single quotation marks. So, for example, when referring to research Ninemeyer wrote, so now this is Ninemeyer that I'm quoting, the article found, and now I, she's talking about this article, so in there she had put in quotes the majority of injuries, so I put single quotes. So you put the double quotes on the outside, that's what these double quotes are, and single quotes around the quoted material. So if you're reading something and it has quotes in it, you want a quote that starts before them and after that quote, when you get to their quote, you put it into single quotes. So you take their double quotes, become single quotes. All right. Okay, so what should we remember about summarizing, paraphrasing, and quoting? What did we learn today? Whether you quote, paraphrase, or summarize, you must cite the ideas you get from your resources in your papers. Students should always use signal phrases to introduce quotations, paraphrases, and summaries. So here are some signal phrases that you can use to introduce your summaries, to introduce your paraphrases, and to introduce your quotations. According to author, according to the state the text, the author states, then you put the author's name, Mrs. Fisher says, comma, quote, Mrs. Fisher suggests, comma, space, quote, and all these are comma, space, quote, by the way. According to Mrs. Fisher, comma, space, quote, according to um, Mrs. Fisher's raps, states, comma, quote, in fact, Mrs. Fisher asserts, comma, space, quote, as Mrs. Fisher explains, comma, space, quote, Mrs. Fisher argues that, comma, space, quote, as cited by Mrs. Fisher, Mrs. Urata writes, comma, space, quote. All right. And here's some signal phrases to introduce your explanations, those blue explanations after every um, direct quote. Because quotes don't write papers, people do. So it's important to explain every piece of evidence, connecting it to your thesis to prove it's true. So here's different ways to write that. This quote demonstrates, this means, this is significant to, this is important to, and you're putting your thesis in there. This shows how, this proves, this exemplifies, this explains. So those are different ways to write, to um, introduce your blues. <clears throat> so how do you quote? Use T-L-Q-C-E, let that guide you. Transition, lead in, quotation, citation, explanation. An in-text citation for quoted evidence is as follows. According to Ninemeyer, comma, space, quote, a law should be passed requiring cheerleading coaches to be safety trained end quote, space, parentheses, page numbers in the parentheses, period, outside of the parentheses. An in-text citation of a summary is, to summarize author Valerie Ninemeyer, comma, she wrote a strong argument about how cheerleading needs to be recognized as a sport so that schools can get the funding that they need to require cheerleading coaches to be safety trained. Page number within that last paragraph, or last um, sentence, and then a period outside of it. 
a summary, uh, another way to do it would be a summary of, now I'm gonna summarize an article, Remote Community Gets High Tech Pharmacy, is as follows, colon, and then I would give my summary. <clears throat> an in-text citation of a paraphrase, they're done just like uh, quotes. So just like quote, according to author, author Valerie Ninemeyer, comma, but now I don't put it in quotes because she didn't say this. I'm paraphrasing it. It's in my own words and in my own style. She argues that <clears throat> cheerleading would be safer if cheerleading coaches were trained. Again, no quotes are around it, but that last sentence that I state of her paraphrase I'm going to put the page number and a period outside. So I'm going to have that punctuation mark for the last sentence contain that page number that I found that information on. In accordance, and another way to say it, according to or in accordance with Valerie Ninemeyer, comma, and then I, um, in my own style and in my own words, cheerleading needs to be a sport so that cheer coaches are required to be safety trained. I have the page number, period. <clears throat> If you're asked to use evidence to support your answer, always quote the evidence. Quoted evidence means that you're using word for word, punctuation for punctuation, capital for capital, exactly the way the author wrote it. Do not use quoted evidence if you are asked to paraphrase. They're checking to see if you know. If they say paraphrase, they want to know that you know not to put a direct quote. You don't put anything that the author said word for word because paraphrasing means that you're going to write it in your own words and in your own style. Do not use quoted evidence if you are asked to summarize. Again, they're checking to see if you know that when you summarize, you do not use word for word from the text. Summarizing means to put it in your own words. Remember S-U-M, shorter than the original. Use your own words all and use it main ideas. You don't have to do every main idea, but they should be main ideas only. When you're writing to spell, does your spelling, capitalization, punctuation, sentence structure, and word choice count? Absolutely. It does whether you're writing a paper in class or whether you're writing on the Smarter Balance Assessment. Therefore, double check your grammar before submitting. Do this by reading your paper backwards. Start with the last sentence and read it as a sentence to make sure it makes a complete thought. Check for your spelling, your capitalization, your punctuation, look at it as a sentence, make sure all homonyms are correct, and um, it's not a fragment, it's not a run-on. Then go to the next sentence and do that throughout your whole paper. All right, and that ends today's grammar lesson. So now we are on what I call our time to show what you know, a grammar recap from what we've already learned. In our previous grammar lessons, we learned about capitalization. Remember to capitalize proper nouns like um, Abraham Lincoln, right? But not common nouns like um, if you said teacher. Capitalize brand names, but not common names. So the brand name, but not the common name next to it. So if you said Maytag, dishwasher. Maytag, yes. Dishwasher, no. Capitalize titles when they come before a person's name, like Dr. Fisher, but not a title alone in place of the name. So, doctor or mom, those would not be capitalized. The only time you would capitalize those is if they are the direct address. A direct address is who you're talking to. So, if you said, Mom, where are my car keys? Mom would be capitalized. Well, it's the beginning of the sentence, too. But um, if I said, Where are my car keys, Mom? Now I'm talking to mom, and you would separate it with a comma, and it would be a capital mom, because that's a direct address is always capitalized. You always capitalize the first word in every sentence and the first word in every poetry line. You capitalize races, nationalities, states, countries, regions, religions, streets, cities, highways, bodies of water, mountains, proper noun abbreviations, specific courses, etc. You will capitalize days of the week, months of the year, special calendar events, but not the seasons, fall, spring, winter, and summer. All right, so we learned that. All right, and what we learned today is whether you quote, paraphrase, or summarize, you must include an in-text citation with your quote, your paraphrase, or your summary. Your in-text citation must include the author's name and page number 
from the source you're quoting from, you're quoting or paraphrasing or summarizing from. Um, you should always use signal phrases to introduce your quotations, to introduce your paraphrases, and to introduce your summaries. For example, in accordance with or according to. So for example, whether it's quoted evidence, paraphrased, or summarized in accordance with Herbert Hoover, notice they say that each time, and there's a comma after each one. The difference is, if it's quoted, I put in quotes what they said. When it's in my own words, I don't put it in quotes, but I still put that page number. And when it's summarized, it's in my own words, so it's not in quotes, and I still put the page number I found it in. All right, so whenever you're asked to include evidence, always use quoted text. The only time that you're not going to use word for word evidence is if they specifically ask you to paraphrase or summarize. Then they're testing to see whether or not you know when you paraphrase, it means to put it in your own style and in your own words. And when you summarize, it means to explain all the main ideas in your own words. Remember SUM, shorter than the original, use your own words, include main ideas. And that for all of them, you should have a works cited page where you have all the sources in alphabetical order with the authors by author's last name. And you have the author's name, your published title, the website or source, and the URL if there is one. When you're writing, your spelling, capitalization, and punctuation will count for or against you. Therefore, double check your grammar before submitting. Do this by reading your paper backwards, as we already talked about. Use spell check when it's available. Always use spell check. All right, and now today we are done and done. Great job on grammar number two. I look forward to seeing you for grammar number three.